Gregory here from The Brain Academy. So last week we talked about COVID fatigue and how we're all sick and tired of this thing, right? Well, this week on a more positive note, let's look at it from a different perspective. Vaccination has started and actually, did you know there is a whole body of studies and research showing us how to make our vaccine shots more effective, to have a stronger antibody response. So why is nobody talking about this? What are they waiting for? Good news, people. Good news. Finally, we're gonna get there. I can feel it. Soon we're all gonna be like... So, vaccination is underway, right? Well, some countries are faster than others, but that doesn't matter. We're all gonna get there. Eventually. So no vaccine works 100%, right? So if you have a 95% efficiency, it basically means that out of 100 people getting the vaccine, five of them will still develop the illness. The good news is the severity will likely be lower. Well, but that's not assured because, uh, I mean, <laughs> some people who got the shot still passed away. Are you fucking kidding me? Huh, so much for this being a more positive video. You serious? Anyway, what I'm trying to say is that you want to be part of the 95%, right? The people for whom the vaccine actually worked was effective and does protect you from any future corona-related encounters. Now guess what? We can actually influence that. I kid you not. We can boost our immune response to the vaccine for it to be more effective and make sure we're on the 95% side of things. Seriously, there's actually quite some research on the subject. Well, not so much on the corona vaccine itself as it's all so fresh. But if we base ourselves on studies done for other vaccines, we can actually quite safely assume that what helps the immune response in other cases should also be effective for this one, right? Well, these have nothing to do with the usual suspects where we have no control over, you know, uh, things like age and sex. Well. Interestingly, we have some good news here as well. Usually women tend to have a higher antibody response to vaccine than men. Well, this time, this doesn't seem to affect the vaccine. And the same goes with age, actually. Usually vaccine response diminishes in older people. Again, we don't seem to see that happening here. No, I want to talk to you about things we do have control over. The behavioral side of things. Our behavior, as in, do this and your vaccine will work better. I've always been fascinated, you know, and shocked actually by the effect of little things that at first seem merely anecdotal and end up having a huge effect. Well, here we go then. Five things you can do to make your COVID vaccine more effective. First, don't stress. Yes, I know, it's not something you can just switch on and off, right? But still, research with students shows that during stressful exam periods... Oh, God, the pressure! I can't take it! I can't, I can't do it! <laughs> those students who were most stressed took the longest to build up a protective antibody response. So why stress? Well, I actually talk about this in our course on stress management. Long story short, stress is a defense mechanism. It makes our whole system focus on dealing with a perceived threat. And by doing so, it diverts resources from other areas. Areas which include digestion and, wait for it, our immune system. Now that's usually not a problem when we face a normal life-threatening situation. You know, the usual fighting of lions and wolves and the like. It's not a problem because the situation is likely to be resolved soon. Oh shit. Uh. Okay, oh god, okay, um, like, keep calm. Uh, you know, little A, or you survive, little B, you don't. <laughs> but in today's world, things aren't as straightforward anymore, and we now face things like chronic stress, where we face a prolonged situation and our immune system gets suppressed for longer periods of time. Hmm, that reminds me that last week I just made this video about how the whole pandemic has put us into the state of constant alert of chronic stress. That's a catch-22 right there. Anyway, studies have shown that lower stress levels two days before a vaccine and more importantly 10 days after the vaccine have the most influence on your antibody response. So what can you do to lower your stress levels? Well, that brings me to point number two, exercise. Exercise is one of the most effective ways to combat stress. We could play dodgeball. Our sweat is packed with cortisol and it's a great way to get it out of our system. But on top of that, studies have shown that having an active lifestyle, especially for people above 60, gives you a higher antibody response to flu vaccination. 
Well, even just exercising 45 minutes before getting a flu shot will have a higher impact than not exercising. Now, younger adults have a naturally stronger immune system, so we don't see these effects play out so dramatically with them. But still, one study showed how a 15 minute upper body workout before a flu vaccine saw a stronger immune response than the control group who just rested. So exercise can really help here and it helps for our next point as well because exercise also helps in the amount of deep sleep we get the following night. Well, that is if you don't exercise just before going to bed. So three is sleep. The third way to boost our immune response is true sleep. Yes, sleep. I say it in all my workshops. By far, the best thing we can do to improve our brain is to work on our sleep. Sleep is so important on so many levels. I'm actually right in the middle of writing a new course about the neuroscience of sleep and dreams. It will come out in a couple of months. But the point is, sleep is amazingly important to us. It affects so many things. And one of them is our immune response. And studies show that healthy adults who sleep on average less than six hours are less likely to develop a strong enough antibody response following a hepatitis B vaccination, as compared to people who do sleep on average more than seven hours a night. Another study restricted people from having their full night of sleep several nights before having their hepatitis A vaccine. And again, they had a lower antibody response compared to the control group who got their full night of sleep. In general, sleep duration on the two nights before flu vaccination counts as the best predictor of the immune response several months later. Get that beauty sleep, people. Four, connect. For the next point, you're gonna hate me. <laughs> now you're really gonna be mad. I apologize already, but studies have shown that one way to improve our immune response to a vaccine is for people not to be isolated. I know, the pandemic, the lockdown, the whole social distancing thing, I know. And yet, even in young healthy people, feelings of loneliness have been associated with a lower antibody response to flu vaccination. And having a better social support or even being married, hey is linked to higher antibody response with the flu and hepatitis B vaccines. Did you know that there is actual research showing that social support in the form of hugging, hugging, is associated with a decreased risk of catching a cold? Hugging, 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 hugging. I told you you would hate me. No, 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 I don't hate you. <laughs> Now let's not take that as an excuse to break COVID rules, okay? But if you do live with your loved ones under the same roof, some extra hugs before getting your COVID shot will not hurt. If not, do connect virtually, talk, spend some time together, have fun. Not only will it reduce your stress and help you sleep better at night, a positive mood also acts as a vaccine boost, while neuroticism is linked to a poor antibody response to immunization. Five, no alcohol. Last but not least, resist the urge to celebrate your shot with alcohol. Shot, alcohol. I'm confused. Not before, not afterwards. In Russia, they recommend to quit alcohol two weeks before their first shot and up to three weeks after their second shot. Why? Well, because the alcohol impairs the immune response and could even render the whole vaccine completely useless. The more you drink, the more it will negatively affect the effectiveness of your vaccine. So no, no binge drinking. You'll have to wait three to four weeks if your plans involve some serious levels of alcohol to celebrate your newfound freedom. freedom! Yeah, yeah, we know, we know. That's it. Those are the five things you can do to boost your immune system and make sure your vaccination is as effective as possible. No stress, exercise, sleep, connect with others and no alcohol. Did you already get your shot? How did it go? Leave your comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe. But if you want the real stuff, you go to brainacademy.com. Join our 300,000 students and start using your brain better. Brain out. Sharpen.